pianist's fingers, the bombardier beetle. I dream I'm an insect. It's actually very weird. The square root of minus one, dancing bees. I'm into meteorites and I'm into meatloaf. It's hard to choose the seven wonders from the fantastic world around us. In a world full of wonders. I realized that the real world was beyond imagination. Seven scientists, from Richard Dawkins to Arthur C. Clarke, choose their seven wonders of the world. Part of Science Week, Wednesday at 7 on BBC Two. The latest news now on BBC Two with Moira Stewart. Good afternoon. The general election campaign has begun with the Prime Minister's announcement that polling day will be on May the 1st. Mr Major confirmed the date after seeing the Queen at Buckingham Palace. He said he was confident of victory and has already begun his campaign with a visit to Luton. The leaders of the opposition parties said they were looking forward to joining the fight. After weeks of speculation, the formal announcement at last of the election date. The Prime Minister gave the details after seeing the Queen at Buckingham Palace and gave the impression of relishing the fight. I'm looking forward to getting out of uh, Whitehall and Westminster and campaigning in every part of the country and taking the message of what we've achieved and of our hopes and ambitions for this country out to people in every part of the United Kingdom. The Labour leader was visiting a London school when the announcement came. He insisted a longer campaign would be better for getting his message across. This campaign is going to be about the condition of Britain now and the future of Britain, that Britain can be better than this. And it'll be about how the Conservative Party have let people down, have broken their promises, and about how a new and revitalised Labour Party can get this country going. The Liberal Democrats say they're well prepared for the campaign and insist they're the only ones offering genuine choice. The choices, we believe, are quite clear for the British electorate. They are between promises you can't believe and clear, costed, realistic, targeted commitments about what we must do to face up to the challenges that this country enters the next century. Everyone's now expecting not just the longest campaign in living memory, but the most bitterly fought. The Home Secretary, Michael Hurd, is meeting his Labour opposite number, Jack Straw, about now to discuss how to get 13 law and order measures onto the statute books before Parliament rises. Mr Straw said Labour was ready to cooperate on sensible measures that would cut crime. Figures out today show that recorded crime in England and Wales has fallen for the fourth year running, but crimes of violence rose by 11%. It now accounts for 7% of all offences, with increases in sexual offences and muggings. Mr Howard said crime was still too high, but overall the figures were encouraging. The nuclear waste agency, Nirex, has been refused permission to build an underground laboratory in West Cumbria. The Environment Secretary, John Gummer, dismissed the company's appeal against Cumbria County Council, which had refused permission for the development. This marks the end of a lengthy process for Nirex, the company charged with disposing of Britain's nuclear waste. It spent the past 15 years and nearly £400 million testing for an underground site suitable for burying Britain's nuclear waste. Today's decision follows a lengthy public inquiry into the possibility of building a rock laboratory on a site near Sellafield in Cumbria. The idea was to then see if it was suitable for putting nuclear waste there. Nirex had looked at 12 possible sites. Sellafield was its preferred choice, close to the nuclear reprocessing plant, where 60% of Britain's nuclear waste is stored. Today's rejection will set its quest for a suitable dump back years. It will now have to look elsewhere and is deeply disappointed but pressure groups including Friends of the Earth and Greenpeace are delighted. The man who admitted killing the 54-year-old fashion designer, Ozzy Clark, last year has been jailed for six years at the Old Bailey. Diego Cogolato pleaded guilty to manslaughter slaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. A former firefighter has received £200,000 in compensation for being sexually harassed at work. Tanya Clayton was employed by the Hereford and Worcester Fire Brigade. In 1994, an industrial tribunal decided that she had endured appalling discrimination, which had left her a shadow of her former self. That's it for now. There's more from the newsroom at 6 o'clock on BBC One. Good afternoon from News West. The West Country is gearing itself up for the general election on May the 1st. The three main parties say their campaigns are ready to go. The region is crucial to all parties, with the Conservatives holding all but six of the region's 27 seats. 
The Football Association says it's unlikely that either Bristol City or Bristol Rovers will be punished following crowd trouble at yesterday's derby match. Officials at the FA will study reports from the police and their own crowd advisor over the next couple of days. James Wishart, one of the two surgeons involved with the controversy over children's heart operations in Bristol, is to retire. The Bristol Royal Infirmary is shortly to publish details of an investigation into surgery that he carried out. Ducks and geese from the Wild Fowl and Wetlands Trust in Slimbridge are on the way to Buckingham Palace by royal appointment. They replace a number of the Queen's flamingos and other birds which were killed by a fox last year. Well, from birds to fish. Michael Fish, in fact. And temperatures soar to 17 degrees. That's 63 Fahrenheit this afternoon in eastern England. And there's some fine weather to end the day. But in the west and north, it's already cloudy, some drizzly rain around. And uh, although it's mild at the moment, things are really going to change. The change happening during this evening and tonight, that cloud moves across the country, bringing most of us some spits and spots of drizzle. And then eventually across Scotland and Northern Ireland, somewhat clearer weather following later in the night and there will be some showers as well. Temperatures in that northern part dropping back to four or five degrees, but a mild night just about everywhere. And then tomorrow, England and Wales starts off grey and misty. Again, there'll be that drizzle around, but by then, Scotland and Northern Ireland are already bright and breezy with sunshine and showers. Some of those showers getting quite heavy and lengthy later on, and the brighter, colder weather feeding south. I first read Pesner's Buildings of England as a young architectural student in the swinging 60s. 30 years on, Janet Street Porter takes Pesner's guide to North Yorkshire. Quite simply, there's nowhere else like it in the whole of Britain. The former architectural student compares notes with the Grand Master. Who'd have thought that 30 years later I'd find myself in complete agreement with him about the North Riding of Yorkshire? Travels with Pevsner, Saturday at 6.15 on BBC. For BBC Two Now, the man who can time travel without a TARDIS. It's Martin Lewis and today's the day. Do you know which king was born today in 1919 and went on to be unforgettable? Good afternoon and welcome to Today's The Day on Monday the 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day. And just for you at home, here's our preview of some of the classic clips we have in store for you today. The Cambridge warm-up came to...